let me put in a context what are these power laws, right? So power laws, they show up everywhere in nature. Uh, Bitcoin is just now, it's beautiful because if you like Bitcoin, if you believe in Bitcoin, if you think that it's something special, now you understand why it's not a normal asset. It's actually more like a physical system and it's universal. It belongs to uh, other things like the motion of the planets, for example. The Bitcoin is more like a natural phenomena than uh, a normal asset. You know, that is the claim as a physicist I'm trying. And this actually is in contradiction with some of the things that you hear sometimes from other analysts. They say, oh, Bitcoin is following a nice curve of adoption. It doesn't. If this trajectory continues, we are going to expect an evaluation of uh, Bitcoin that is 64 times the price of right now. So if right now it's, we are around 65,000, we are talking about $4 million. All right, everybody. So as promised, what I want to do is uh, bring somebody in who could actually explain what exactly the uh, Bitcoin power law is and just kind of give us a little bit of background about where things are right now and potentially where things are going. So uh, uh, Giovanni, uh, welcome to the to the show for the very first time. Thanks for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. I'm very excited about uh, I am a fan of yours. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So let's do this. So Giovanni, show us like the very, the most simple version of the Bitcoin power law and what it is, and then we'll kind of dig deeper into it for a greater understanding for the audience. Sure. Um, so there are different way of seeing this, right? The, the simplest possible way is actually probably this graph that I'm showing you on right now, right? It's an unusual graph because in fact, uh, when people see this graph for the first time, and maybe now people are a little bit used because you know it has done the rounds, uh, but uh, when I, pop, I posted it the first time, I posted in 2018 actually. So one of the things that people don't realize that uh, it got a lot of not notoriety right now that has been around for some time. I actually worked on the coin model since 2013. 12 actually all the way to wow. 2012 wow first, even before i bought my first bitcoin but it was in 2012 i actually wanted to analyze it i downloaded the data tried to understand it mathematically and then i thought wow this this is different from anything else i saw before and i jumped in so it's a 12 years journey uh, but a big uh, breakthrough was when i realized there was a very nice beautiful relationship between price and time that is illustrated by this graph and the graph what the graph does it's bring out the, the signal uh, so it's something that we do in physics all the time there are many different type of relationship right in physics and my, my background is physics uh, i am a physicist uh, in particular astrophysics that is my background i worked uh, uh, for some time as you know professors then i went in neuroscience uh, bringing the same tools uh, from physics in, in this different field. And I had a very quickly success uh, because you know, it, it allows me to see things in a different way. So I did the same thing with Bitcoin where I use the eyes of a physicist to understand the data. And, and one of the things uh, we do often to um, show a relationship between two quantities, right? Because that is when we collect data, when we study a phenomena, we want to illustrate mathematical relationship between quantities, right? Could be pressure and volume or, you know, the size of a star with this uh, temperature or whatever, you know? Uh, yeah. And uh, in this case, uh, one of the important parameters that everybody's interested is price, right? So yeah. I, I tried to, to in, initially, I was looking at many different on-chain properties like uh, addresses, uh, transactions, uh, hash rate, and all these actually have relationship with price and I can illustrate to you in a moment, but really the critical one, the most important one is time, right? Because uh, if I can show something evolving in time and changing in time and there is a regularity, then it's kind of a holy grail because uh, it allows me to actually make predictions. If I have a model that uh, uh, you know, I can show that a parameter behaves in time in a very regular fashion, then I can assume that it will continue to do the same. In particular, we are going to see when we find the relationship of this type because uh, I use this term that is called scaling variant that is a little bit uh, uh, you know difficult for people to maybe to uh, process but it's actually a very simple idea that uh, I will explain in a moment. So but basically one of the most important relationships that we find in 
nature all over the place, it's a relationship of a kind way of, of very similar to one the one that we are seeing here. So what we are seeing here. So usually you are you are you see Bitcoin drawn in this way, right? The famous rainbow chart. This is not really the rainbow chart. It's uh, the same power law that I just showed you, but uh, in what is called a log linear chart. Uh, the reason, and you know, and then there is this chart that is actually the linear chart. That is basically we have a, a linear price and a linear time. The mm -hmm. time that we measure here is always expressed in terms of how many days are passed since Bitcoin was created from what we call the Genesis block. Bitcoin was created January 3, 2009. We measure the time, right? Right now, for example, we are about 5,500 days, something like that, I don't remember, but uh, um, around that amount of time. Mm -hmm. And if you see a chart like this, that is usually what uh, people show on TV, you know, to make fun of Bitcoin, because uh, in that case, you see this, what is coming out is the noise. The noise are these huge bubbles mm -hmm. where uh, if you look at them like this, you know, they look really crazy. Like they go up, the price goes up, you know, to $60,000, then it crashes mm -hmm. down to 16000 mm -hmm. So if I am some an analyst uh, on TV and trying to be conservative, uh, uh, this will look like, one of the craziest assets that I could ever invest on because it, it does these very, very crazy swings. And many times when we want to, um, you know, make fun of Bitcoin, we use this chart, right? This is what Kramers uses all the time, you know, to <laughs> illustrate how unstable of a of a, um, an asset it is. But really, we are focusing on the noise instead of focusing on the signal. Now, this chart is better because what do we do here? Mm -hmm. We take the log. So the log, again, for the people that maybe are not into math or they are a little, they had a bad experience in high school or whatever, uh, it's a very simple idea. The idea is that when you have something like Bitcoin that had a very big range of values, right? If you look at the entire history of Bitcoin, in fact, we don't include even the early transactions here. We include only the transaction since the exchanges open, that it was around 2010. If I go all the way back and include some of the early transactions, we are talking about, uh, you know, the, the first one recorded was something like $1 for 5,000 Bitcoin, something crazy yeah. like that, you yeah, know, yeah. absurd. And so if you actually look at this huge, big range of uh, changes in the price of Bitcoin, the best way to illustrate uh, these changes is using a log. So what the log does. So if you write uh, numbers with, with what is called the scientific notation. So imagine I have 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, right? So I'm focusing on these huge, big changes, like what is called order of magnitude, right? So you right. go from 1 to 10 to 100,000 and so on. If I focus on that, the best way to do it is writing these numbers uh, with the scientific notation. What does it mean? So, for example, 10 will be written as 10 or 10 to the 1. So using an exponent. So 100 is 10 to the 2, right? Because it means you take 10 and multiply 10 by itself two times. 10 to to times 10 is 100. 10 mm -hmm. times time, three times, 10, 10, 10, 10, it's 10 to the 3,000, and so on. 10,000 is 10 to the 4, a million will be 10 to the 6, and so on. It's useful because it's emphasizing the exponent. So imagine now I want to do a chart where I write the exponents instead of writing the number. That will allow me to make things more regular, showing more easily all the different uh, uh, scales. And mm -hmm. the way to do that is to take the log. So if you take the log, the log gives us the exponent. So I put in in the log as an input 100 and it spits out 2. I put 1,000 and it spits out 3. I put I put 10,000, if it is 10 to the 4, then it spits out 4. So it's not really a difficult concept. Like almost anything, if it is explained, everybody can understand. It. And, you know, Bitcoiners are clever people. So they should understand what a log is, right? So you sh and this is this chart is not uncommon because, you know, my, often uh, we see it. Maybe if you go on TradingView, you can select uh, uh, the log, right? And you can see the uh, price actions. And now it looks much more orderly, right, than before. These bubbles are much more contained. They, mo they look more regular. Uh, it looks like there is some kind of general trend, right? In fact, they, 
bubble can even understood as oscillations around this trend. The problem with this chart, though, it's unless you do some, so, you know, so maybe you're using some fitting tool or some other sophisticated uh, mathematical tool, you don't know if there is a real uh, pattern. Uh, you know, is this curve maybe tapering off? Is it reaching some kind of uh, uh, level where uh, uh, it doesn't go above that level, like, you know, some kind of a symptote or something? We don't know, right? It's not easy to see. So one, one further, what we call transformation. Uh, so we can look at this chart, right, before we look at the rainbow chart. The rainbow chart really represents deviation from the trend. But this is a simplest chart where basically what do I do? Instead of only taking the log of a price, I take also the log of a time. And this mm. is where my breakthrough came, came uh, from because, and, you know, it took all the way to 2018. Nobody ever, you know, among all the thousands of analysts and people, very clever people who work on understanding Bitcoin, nobody ever done this. I was the first person. And, mm. and but for a physicist, is almost a matter of course, you know, because we do this all the time. Uh, it's a tool that we uh, uh, use to uh, show if there are this particular relationship uh, between the data we, that we call power laws. What is a power law? A power law is something uh, that has this form uh, where you have a quantity Y that is related to another quantity X, because remember, we want to understand uh, one quantity relates to another. In yeah. our case, uh, in that graph that I just show is price and time. So Y is time. price and X is the time, right? Mm -hmm. So if there is a, but this is a very general thing. We found this relationship all over nature. There are many physiological uh, relationships. Like, you know, if you look at how the anim an animal grows relatively to how much energy is using, you can organize them. And it turns out that the relationship between the size of an animal in the much energy the animal uses, follow this type of uh, mathematical relationship. They are called power law. I know that some people get turned off by the word law because they think you know it is uh, something eternal, etc. But a yeah. law in physics means pattern. This is what it means. Sometimes you know we use uh, like you know lawyers use a uh, specialized jargon. You know, and, and you sometimes there is misunderstanding of what a word means you know uh, in this case law means pattern a pattern and then if a okay. pattern is is uh, sustained over time and is verified by more observation you know it becomes a law right so it's a it's a pattern basically a verified pattern and so it and it's called power because it has to do with this exponent remember like i say the exponent uh, for the 10 to the 2 10 to the 3 and so on right mm -hmm. so if there is a relationship um, that uh, uh, relates one quantity to the another. And this A is just constant that uh, mediates, you know, the, the, uh, these two quantities, one with another, proportionality constant. Uh, it's not really the most important thing. The most important thing is this exponent. Uh, so if I have a relationship of this type, type, it's called a power law. And I will say, I don't know, I, I, I didn't look at the number, but uh, roughly something on the order of maybe 50, 60 percent of all the different things that we found around us, you know, very irregularities, uh, different type of behavior, follow this power law. And uh, mm. it, it, I found a T-shirt online. Mm. I didn't make it. It's such a an internal joke that the T-shirt say, "I went to a physics conference and all what I got was a lousy power law." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So funny, you know, because it's actually we are a little bit too enamored with this uh, uh, power law. There is a beautiful, beautiful book called Scale that I suggest everybody to read. Mm. It's almost like the new Bitcoin standard. Uh, mm. that, you see, uh, the, it's called Scale because, first of all, these changes of order of magnitude were also called Scale. Uh, it's a, a scale change. Uh, you go from 10, 100, 1,000. That is a scale. Uh, because it wants to emphasize how this scaling idea, it's really an important idea. Of it. And reading this book, I, I had a, you know, a lot of people um, re thanking me to suggest this book because it kind of changes your understanding of a word uh, hmm. in how we relate it, you know, with different things, what happened if you make, a, like in many movies, you know, sometimes they show what happened if some human became small or if you have something like Godzilla, you know, what will change if uh, you have a big lizard that is huge, like a building, you know, what, what is going on? Can can even exist something like that, you know? Um, and so this this book 
uh, discusses all this idea and it shows how you know this is why they use uh, universal laws of growth because you, we found them in how uh, animals grow uh, how mm, different parts of the bodies uh, like teeth uh, shells uh, thorns uh, mm -hmm. they all follow these power laws it's it's really amazing a beautiful idea uh, and uh, even um, because many times when I explain these things people push back and say, hey, Giovanni, okay, maybe planets follow power laws. In fact, the planets do follow power mm -hmm. laws. The distance of a planet relatively to how much time it takes to, around, to go around the sun is a power law. Um, but, you know, they say, okay, maybe organism, maybe planets, but what about humans? You know, we are spatial. We are not spatial. We are part of nature. And in fact, the book spends a lot of time discussing how these power laws show up in things like cities, economies, companies, and so on. They actually, economists try to study cities, for example, and it was they didn't have the tools and then physicists came along and they say hey look at the gdp it follows a power law look at the hmm. number of gas station in a city it follows a sure. power law the number of crimes the number of uh, how fast you walk in a city all follow power laws it's very general uh, understanding of uh, life and this is why i love this book it's a very nice beautiful book so going going back to understanding what uh, uh the, the power law is if i found the slide uh, let me go back. I think it's here. So okay. um, this type of graph, right? When uh, when you see uh, that is the trick. When you see a straight line in this graph, mm -hmm. this is the tool that we use, almost like a micro, you know, telescope or whatever. If you see that the graph in a in a when you plot the log of one quantity and the log of the other, this is where uh, my breakthrough. Uh, was because not many people are used to take the log of time. In fact, I had people right. being confused about that, saying, you know, like it's impossible to do that. Why would you do that? That is weird, and and so on. But we do it all the time in physics, right? So when you take the log of the time, so in this case, the days from the Genesis block, now you see this beautiful pattern. So the signal comes out. It looks like that Bitcoin follows a very very regular pattern, right? Yes, mm -hmm. there are these bubbles uh, sure. where the price goes up and down, but notice what happens. It, they go around this straight line. So I can draw a straight line. And again, I didn't do it by hand. I use some mathematical tools. It's called regression. That mm -hmm. is finding the best fitting line. So it's the line that minimizes the distance of all these points that represent the price. And uh, and that line tell us basically a general trend, that there is a general trend for mm. Bitcoin. It's basically, you can think it almost like a fair value, you know, the fair value for Bitcoin. And right. then uh, the price oscillates around. Sometimes if it, you find it above is when the price is overvalued, we have a bubble, and then the price is below, and then this is where we have our bottoms, right? Mm. Uh, and the price is undervalued. And so it's a, actually a very powerful tool uh, to uh, tell us uh, where we are in the cycles, uh, if a price is undervalued or overvalued uh, relatively to this general trend. But also, the beauty of this is that we can write literally an equation, like a little equation that you write on paper, mm. that tell us what is the general trend of a, of a price. And you All can right. project, because now if you write it in terms of time, you can say, okay, let me... Uh, you know, put in the equation, like the equation where we were looking at before. So mm -hmm. in the case of Bitcoin, you see uh, these uh, parameters that we were talking about, this N that is exponent and the constant, uh, we can derive them from the graph. So basically it turns out from relatively simple math because all this math really, it's high school math, right? If mm -hmm. one has the time and, and the patience to follow it, I had like hundreds of people replicating the result because that is also the beauty, such a simple, relatively simple idea because, you know, Bitcoin is complex. With fact, we can write a simple equation. It's amazing. Anybody really can do it with an Excel spreadsheet. You can take the log of time, you know, the days that are passed by from uh, when Bitcoin was uh, created. You take the log of the price and you can draw it yourself. In fact, I would like every Bitcoiner to do it. So, you you know, we verify. We don't want to trust anybody, me included. And so right. it's it's really interesting to reproduce the chart by yourself. And and then it turns out that the slope 
of that uh, uh, line. And you, you know, when you do this regression method, and, and again, Excel, you can say regress these uh, logs, you know, the log mm -hmm. of price, the log of time, then you will get, uh, uh, when you regress something, basically you find this line, and the line can be characterized by two data points, you know, that is the y-intercept of a straight line and mm -hmm. the slope. Uh, the, sl the slope is actually, and again, it's relatively simple math to show, because remember, it's a straight line in a log, right? It's not really a straight line in a normal graph. If I show you this, uh, how Bitcoin power law looks like in a, if I go back to that linear chart in the beginning, it looks like yeah. a hockey stick uh, because mm -hmm. it goes up very fast. Uh, and so basically we have to, we, the equation for Bitcoin price is nothing else than a constant times the days that are passed from Bitcoin to the power of 5.83, because that slope of a of a straight line turns out to be 5.83. Okay, okay. So it's a, one of the simplest possible formulas that you can imagine, besides, you know, being really a straight line, then in that case it will be price, you know, proportional to the time. In this case, it's time, price proportional to the time six, so a number close to six. Uh, that, first of all, you know, when people say the price went parabolic, well, a parabola is square, right? From high school, right? A time to a square. That will mean that the price is going up like a parabola, if I mean that. Sometimes they mean exponential, really, but they use the word parabolic not correctly. But it's really fast, right? A parabola goes up fast because if you double the time, it goes four times. Uh, um, if you triple nine times, well, this is six. So do you know what it means? It means, so right now, for example, 15 years have passed by, right, since the creation of Bitcoin. Now, let's double that 15 years. Let's project it to the future. So let's imagine that we have 15 more years of Bitcoin history. Now, the way you, you project, right, it's faster. Of course, you can plug in the numbers of days in five years, 10 years, 15 years. But roughly, mm -hmm. we can do it by doubling because it's simple. We can do it in our head. So if I double, what do I do? I take the two and I take the power of six. Mm -hmm. Two to the power of six, it's 64. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that means that uh, in 15 years, if this trajectory continues, we are going to expect an evaluation of uh, Bitcoin that is 64 times the price of right now. Wow. So if right now it's we are around sixty five thousand, we are talking about four million dollars, something mm -hmm. of that of that type. So Bitcoin in fifteen years, it's four million dollars according to this formula. And you know, many people even think that is a slow process. They they are thinking, oh, you know, it's too slow. I don't mm -hmm. think so. You know, uh, fifteen years, sixty four times is pretty amazing. You know, right. of course, if you do this early on in the history, you get bigger number because. Unfortunately, this is not uh, an exponential. Uh, mm -hmm. If it was an exponential, because many times people say, oh, you know, we have a, a exponential growth. We don't have exponential growth because you see in this graph, the log linear chart, if uh, Bitcoin was an exponential, it would look like a straight line. So right. while, while the power, while the log log graph, if it is a straight line, it's a power law. This graph, the log linear chart, if it was a straight line, then it will be an exponential. It's not. And you see how it's bending? It's bending because that means it's slower than an exponential. So anything that is not an exponential will look like a little bit that is bent. It's not really bent because it's actually, if you plot, uh, even in a graphing calculator, a function that is time to the six, it will look like an hockey stick. It's an hockey stick. Right. Uh, it, it really goes up very fast. It's just a, an artifact of a chart that it looks bent like that. Uh, and many people get confused because, you know, but uh, I use all the time there is a, an app online called called Desmos, where you can actually write down, I, I play with the, you know, the people who follow me on X all the time and say, hey, look, I, I did it for you because you can actually write the equation. And mm -hmm. you can see it's a really fast growing curve uh, that is... Uh, um, you know, basically uh, looks like an hockey stick if you do it uh, in a normal chart, in a linear chart. And uh, you kind of kind of see it here, you see, right? With, uh, I should do this. Uh, I actually, I posted today uh, online a graph where I was doing it linearly. Uh, I don't know if you can put my, pull my X. It's like one of the best chart. I, I average the price over four years 
uh, and uh, um, and then I plotted how their power look looks like. It's really crazy, you know. It's uh, it's mm. really striking. Um, I don't know if you have the time to show the uh, the graph, you know, on my X account. It's a uh, scroll scroll down a little bit. Uh, um, more more uh, you will see it. Not this, but uh, go ahead, go ahead more because I want to sh show you that one. It's really because it's really. And, and, and some people told me, oh, that is what uh, the average X brain likes to see. Scroll like X, this one, this one, this one. And you can maybe zoom in, you can click on it. You see, this is how it looks like. So this is the price average over four years on a moving average. And now we are plotting it in a normal linear chart. And that again, I don't know why nobody ever sees show this. This is mm. Bitcoin average over four years. And it's a linear chart, right? We're showing the days from the uh, birth of Bitcoin. And the price linearly and it looks like an hockey stick and the power mm -hmm. law is nothing else than that red line it's a basically it tells us the price is equal to time to the six close to the six 5.8 something but you know we can round it to the six and you see how incredible so that are square numbers you see that are square uh, yeah. it's it's a statistical calculation that we do to say okay how much of the data can be explained by the red curve so the real price is uh, the black curve that is nothing else than i didn't do anything special than averaging bitcoin over a four years period with a, a four-year moving average right so people maybe are used to a month moving average 10 10 months this is four years so four years is good because the cycles are up and over four years so basically we're kind of almost canceling the cycles, right? You see how the bubbles that are the oscillations are much smaller because we are averaging over the entire cycle. So they kind of cancel. The price goes up, it just goes down. So it's not completely canceled, but it's much more flatted. So basically we are pulling out the signal from the noise. We're not, the signal is this general trend for Bitcoin. And, uh, uh, and the red curve is a simplification, of course, because it's a model, right? Right. They are supposed to simplify the data really is able to explain the behavior of the black data in, in a very simple and regular fashion, that is that power law. And you see 98% because the interpretation of the tar square is that it tell us how close the red curve is in terms of explaining the data. It's basically saying it's explaining 98% of the data, maybe there is 2% that are basically the bubbles that are not explained by this curve. But it does a very good job. Basically, 98% of the behavior is explained by the red line. That is incredible, right? That uh, yeah. Bitcoin behavior is due to some very simple equation that we can extrapolate on, on uh, over time. And people say, why are you saying that thing? Right? Okay, maybe I has behaved in this way. Uh, over this very long period of time. So if you go back to my slides, if you don't mind. So mm -hmm. first of all, it's a very striking chart, right? To see Bitcoin shown in that way. It looks like, first of all, it, any any person that is now orange peel should see that graph. Mm -hmm. because, you know, yeah. don't, sh don't see gra Kramer's uh, graph. <laughs> see this graph, right? When you average out the noise, you know, say, look, it's noise. You know, it goes up, it goes down. But in general, it tends to go up like very fast, like an hockey stick. But what is uh, the beauty of seeing it in this way? The beauty of seeing it in this way is, and here is where uh, the physicist comes in, right? Uh, if you have a, a process that is a power law and power laws show up like these straight lines in this graph, and I can show you a bunch of them in a second, you know, all over us in nature. So we are familiar with them. We can, we know how to recognize them. When you see a straight line in a log, log chart, it's very likely a power law. Power laws have this property that is called scale invariance. What does it mean? Uh, in fact, you know, this is why this book is called Scale. So let me show you in a graph. Uh, I have a lot of slides, so let me show you this one. So, uh, and and here, and again, for, uh, forget for a moment, you know, like this uh, uh, bumpy graph. The, 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 here, I modify uh, the purple line, that is a simple, what I call the simple power law, with a, a more full model, where uh, I'm trying to model also the bubbles, because the bubbles are also very regular. They happen a very precise time, uh, they have very precise deviations from the trend and so on. But we can discuss that in a moment. I wanted to tell you 
why we can rely on the idea that Bitcoin probably is going to do this growth also for the future. At least, you know, I'm interested right now in the next 10 years because beyond 10 years, you know, we can reconvene. Maybe you can invite me again on your show in 10 years from now. <laughs> Maybe earlier than that, we can do an update uh, sometime in the future. But uh, in 10 years, we can see if really Bitcoin did this, right? So this is where uh, when people say, can you project? I mean, being able to project 10 years from now is already incredible, right? Almost nobody does that. But I feel very confident that we can do it. Why? Because of this, what is called scaling variance. Let me explain this scaling variance a little bit, right? Uh, it's this idea that if you have a process like this, you can you see how if you focus on the scale, right? You almost mm -hmm. zoom out because the scale, the scale idea is that you're taking a drone, you're flying away uh, from the forest and you're not seeing the trees anymore. You want to see the general forest, right? The pattern of the general forest. And you learn things from that that you will not be able to learn if you stay in the forest. So by looking at the scale, now we see that the scale changes are very regular. What does it mean? Every time Bitcoin went up by a factor of 10, mm -hmm. it took an equivalent time in, you know, it, in a, it, it, it took an equivalent change in time. So 10 in price, 10 in time. So if I, it was in the beginning, maybe it was taking a few weeks to go up a factor of 10. Then right. when it started to grow and it went, we went from, let's say, $10 to hundreds of dollars, then it didn't take any more few days. It took months when, so, you know, a factor of 10. Mm -hmm. So when we started to go from hundreds to thousands, it started to take years now to go from, Think, you know, that where we are right now, that is uh, around 100,000, let's say, to the next order of magnitude, the ne next order of magnitude is million, right? So to go to million, instead of taking a few years, it will take a decade. It will take about 10 years. So this is where Bitcoin will be in 10 years from now. We will be at a, close to a million. But to do that, Bitcoin takes more time. So basically, the way to understand this that I'm trying to communicate to people, that Bitcoin find, found almost like a path of wisdom because mm -hmm. this is why these power laws are everywhere because they represent almost like a, a, a conservation of energy, conser like uh, the least path, the path of least resistance. It's uh, some kind of process where uh, uh, the nature says, I need to do this thing, like for example, growing a tooth or growing a task yeah. of an elephant, yeah. right? The growth of a task of an elephant follows exactly the same type of pattern. In fact, I can show you a graph. See, this is from a, a paper, a very nice paper that says a universal power law for modeling the growth of teeth, clothes, mm. arms, thorns, big shells, almost everything, right? And we have this beautiful graph where uh, they show uh, the two the growth of a task. And this is a log log chart because you see how they emphasize the scale. So 5, 10, 50. So this is how you know. And also you see how the little ticks are now regular. That shows we are dealing with we are dealing with a log log chart. The log of a, a radius of a task versus mm -hmm. the age of a elephant. And uh, um, and they have two colors because the pink one is the female and makes mm -hmm. sense because you see it's a little bit more shallower growth relative mm -hmm. to the male because the male task is much bigger. You know, they use it to, to fight with each other, etc. But you see how regular the pattern is, right? I, it's an animal, so there is biology and nothing is perfect. You know, if you, this was planets, it will be much more regular, but because it's biology, it's a little bit more... Uh, fuzzy, you know, but still you can see there is a general, very precise pattern, right? And that pattern is called scaling value because what does it mean? The way that uh, the, the task grew from when the elephant was a baby all the way to when he was five years old, it's the same. You see, it's regular because it's a straight line. It's the same type of pattern that you will find it when you went from five years to 10 years, 10 years to 50. It's the same regular growth. And that means, from a physicist's point of view, or from a scientist's point of view, there is some kind of process behind it that makes it grow in that regular fashion. It's not that it can change from any time, you know? And in fact, actually, as the animal becomes bigger and bigger, it kind of settles 
on that pattern. You know, it's not going to change. It's more difficult to make it change. And so it's very predictive because you can imagine, I can be a scientist and say, okay, I saw the growth of this elephant, you know, following this pattern, I can calculate the slope, right, of the rate of change. Mm -hmm. Then through that rate of change, I can make a prediction of how big the elephant task will be when the elephant is 20, 30, and so on. So the same thing, the same, absolutely the same thing, applies to Bitcoin, because if we think that Bitcoin, it's a, uh, what is called a scale invariant. So invariant, that invariant, all what it means is it doesn't change. The way that uh, the scales is changing, it's constant. This is why we see a straight line. And so the fact that uh, Bitcoin went over eight order of magnitude, it's almost like, imagine we have a, a grain of sand. Mm -hmm. And the grain of sand became literally the Mount Everest. That is the range of changes that Bitcoin went through. I'm not making an analogy uh, out of nothing. It's exactly the same type uh, of uh, change, right? If it was a grain of salt, it was uh, like a millimeter big, all the way to be the Himalayas mountain. And that range, imagine you have something that changed in that way in over this enormous range of sizes, and he did it always in the same way. When he was a little pebble, when he was a big rock, when he was a, a boulder, he did it in the same way. Do you think it's going to change when he goes one more order of magnitude? Because we are talking about going from 100 to a million. That is my focus right now. I want to understand what is happening in the next 10 years. Now we can you know, extrapolate to 20 or whatever, but nah. I'm, I'm already fine with 10. Are you fine with 10? You know, <laughs> predicting Bitcoin behavior for the next 10 years? I'm fine with that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty confident from a scientific point of view that this system is scale invariant, that behaves exactly like that task. And so we can make a prediction and the prediction will hold because whatever process is affecting Bitcoin right now is going to stay the same in the future. And people say, oh, but what of ETF? What about this? What about that? I'm telling you that ETFs are there because it's one of these things that Bitcoin went through over and over again. Everything that happened in Bitcoin history was proportional to where Bitcoin was. So when the first exchange came about, they came about because Bitcoin was ready for that. Right? It was at the right size. It was at the right proportion. And so every single event, right? this is why sailors four years ago, five years ago, he was not involved in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. right? uh, five, maybe five years ago, uh, because Bitcoin was not ready for Sailor and Sailor was not ready for Bitcoin. So basically what this picture tell us that all the human interactions, all the events, everything that uh, uh, happened to Bitcoin and the world was happening at the right time, at the right moment to sustain this scale invariant growth. And the ETFs are part of that. In fact, I even did some rough calculation of, I will, I will do eventually a real, mo uh, more precise model. But if you do a rough calculation that I show in my X, basically we need about 600, in fact, actually close to 700 million per day to simply continue on the power law growth of inflow. We need about 700 million inflow. And I already calculated an impact factor of 10, you know, because uh, mm. people say, oh, you know, $1 of uh, inflow as a, an impact on the market cap of, of uh, like if it was $10. Okay, I included all that. Mm -hmm. And the calculation is about 700 million. That is actually larger than what the ETF are bringing in, in right now. So the right. ETFs are actually nothing else than what we need to continue on the power law growth. And so uh, it's basically this very nice, beautiful picture of uh, what Bitcoin is. And by the way, you will say, but okay, why why this happens, right? Why this happens? What are the causes? And see, when we studied these systems, uh, when we studied, and I wanted to show you a graph where, uh, so here, so first of all, let me put in a context what are these power laws, right? So power laws, they show up everywhere in nature. Uh, Bitcoin is just now, it's beautiful because if you like Bitcoin, if you believe in Bitcoin, if you think that it's something special, now you understand why it's not a normal asset. It's actually more like a physical system. 
-hmm. and uh, uh, and it's universal. It belongs to uh, other things like the motion of the planets, for example. The motion of the planets, it's described by a power law. In fact, you see how it is a straight line in this graph where I have a log of the mm -hmm. distance <laughs> of a planet versus the log of in years, in this case, of the time it takes a planet to go around the sun. It looks mm -hmm. like a beautiful, amazing straight line. There is, mm -hmm. And why it is like that? Because there is the law of gravity. The law of gravity is a power law. It uh, describes the motion of the planets and it's a proportion between two quantity you know uh the, the force that uh, the sun between the sun and the planet and the distance in this case of a planet it's a power mm -hmm. law and uh and this behavior is shown there right? you know it's one of actually is probably the first power law that was ever found in nature and then there are things like organism like i was telling you before if i do a graph of the size of an animal in terms of kilos and then how much energy the animals consuming what and you can measure it in different ways but you see again it's a beautiful nice straight line in a log log graph uh, and that tell us there is some kind of organizing principle that as the animal became bigger you know through evolution you know different type of animals it doesn't do it in a random way because if it was random you will see a blob there right it will be just a blob where all the dots are all over the place it follows mm -hmm. A pattern it follows like again I, we call it laws in fact this one uh is, this year when you discover one of these power laws it's, it's such an important thing that, and people put it so much uh, interest in them that you actually get named after them sometimes like this one is called the Kleber's law this one is called the Cle Kepler's law you know so it's a big deal and people spend a lot of time in like there are probably hundreds and hundreds of paper describing why this happens you know people go and in the rab inside the rabbit hole and find all kinds of different reasons. One of the most important things that uh, you want to study through these power laws is that slope, because the slope is almost like a fingerprint. It tells us, it gives us some clue of a type of uh, uh, mechanism that goes behind uh, the creation of this uh, pattern. Uh, and many of these patterns are created when you have iterations. These wires are so common. So basically, if you have a process where uh, whatever happens now influences mm -hmm. what happens in the future, uh, and you have this like in a feedback loop over and over again, then you almost can bet you, you're going to see power laws. And with Bitcoin, for example, if you think about Bitcoin as a network, uh, the number of people that we bring in, right? Uh, how many people we orange peel mm -hmm. depends on how many Bitcoiners there are right now. And more of us there are, more Bitcoiners we're going to bring in. So it's kind of almost natural that there are power laws in Bitcoin behavior. Because, again, it's not like a normal asset. We are a community. We talk with each other. We have uh, shows like yours, you know, where we tell people about cryptos, but, you know, Bitcoin and say that people get enthusiastic about it. It's different. It's different from any or normal asset. It's more like a network. And in fact, uh, I have recent results, like in the last few days, where uh, I don't do any more even this uh, fitting of the lines in a, in a uh, log log graph. That was my starting point. I started to actually model Bitcoin like a real network. I use all this very sophisticated tool of uh, mm -hmm. describing Bitcoin like if it was a network, and I, I'm using addresses as the nodes in the network. And then it turns out that the price is nothing else than the interactions of the addresses. So I'm evolving, you know, I'm making this more like a theory, a scientific theory of what Bitcoin is. Uh, I'm doing a lot, a lot of additional work. But, you know, this shows in a more direct way why it's important, you know, to understand Bitcoin with tools that are, are not the usual tool of finance. It's more like physics. And so, you know, there are many other power laws, like languages, right. for example, if you look at the... Uh, you know, the frequency of a word in a language. And you can see here, there are dozens and dozens of languages, even ancient language like Latin or ancient Egyptians. All of them follow this, what is called a zip flow, that is, again, another form of power law. And cities. So if you look at <coughs> how, be, how many cities there are with a certain size in a nation, and then you organize them in terms of... Uh, uh, order, right, or rank, like we put the first city first, the second city second, and then you measure how many of them there are, 
you form power laws. And it doesn't depend and doesn't matter if you is the United States, France, or whatever other country, they maybe there are differences according to the uh, country, you know, some special way that this graph is uh, showing itself, but the general pattern is the same, no matter what is the country. So it's beautiful to think about Bitcoin as being part of nature, you know, that is not just an, like a normal asset, but it's more like some kind of growing phenomena, growing maybe city, you know, like a digital cities, like sellers say. So there are a lot of uh, beautiful ideas associated with that. Now, Remember, I told you I wanted to under, one of the most critical thing is to understand that slope, right? Because, for example, uh, in fact, let me give you to explain you the significance of this slope, if you don't mind. I want to go back to this particular graph. This graph shows that you know, if you measure the slope of that uh, uh, graph, it turns out is three quarter. So. What is the significance? So imagine I double the size of an animal, right? The animal becomes bigger mm -hmm. and you will think it consumes two times more energy. There are two times the cells, right? I increase the volume of the animal. Uh, so I will expect two times energy consumption. In instead, it's two. And because of that slope is three quarter, I take two to the three quarter. Two to the three quarter, it's a small, is a number that is smaller than two. It's 1.7. So basically, by doubling the size of the animal, I get a 30% discount because mm. of this law. Now, by the time I go from the mouse all the way to the elephant, so the mouse is about 100,000 times smaller than the elephant, right? And I, I will expect 100,000 times more energy consumption. Instead, you can see here, even from the graph, right? It's close to 0 0.1. This one is close to 1,000, right? So about 10,000. So basically, mm -hmm. going from the mouse to the elephant, instead of having 100,000 times more energy consumption, I have only 10,000. That is a, a big discount, 10 times, because it's basically a nonlinear process. So, you know, as you make things growing bigger and bigger, you get a bigger effect. Uh, it's multiplicative, right? So that is amazing because that means that big, large animals can exist. Because imagine the elephant consuming ten times more energy. That I don't know if you ever saw some documentaries. You know, these animals are there destroying trees, eating all the time. An elephant mm -hmm. eats a lot of stuff. If he was eating ten times, if he was eating ten times more, it will probably not exist. He will, he will have to eat. Uh, even more than now, you know, you cannot do it, you know, because of that. <laughs> it needs to sleep also, you know, you cannot eat even when he's sleeping. So um, it's, you know, that is beautiful because it means there is some kind of nature found some kind of an energy conservation path in allowing evolution to make bigger and bigger animals because, you know, you get an advantage uh, by bigger and larger, but if you, it's a trade-off, right? You consume more energy, but if you had to consume two times, three times, 10 times more energy as you grow, then it, the advantage will not be there. So somehow nature found a way of conserving energy as you grow. And, that's in, and when scientists studied, because you know, that is an initial part, uh, point when you find a regularity like that, when you say, okay, wh what is going on? What, what, are, what causes this, right? So it allows you to have a framework to study physiology. And so people that started to explore this topic, they found out of that this has to do with how the vessels in our body organize. They found an efficient way when you're bigger, larger, you, you uh, save up in terms of uh, metabolism and so on. It's a really fascinating topic. And the relevance with Bitcoin that if now we try to focus on why we get this value that is close to six, where that six comes from, what are that, what is the reason? If this is not due to chance, has to be some reason, has to be some causative link. So what did I do? I went back and I started to look at all the different on-chain parameters. So I look at addresses, I look at hash rate, and so on. And I started to plot them. And so I decided to plot them in a log log chart. And it turns out <laughs> that all of them are power loss. That is kind of it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. So, for example, addresses you can see here on the right, on the left, 
if you plot addresses as a function of time in a log log chart, look at this beautiful straight line. This is what it looks like. And this actually is in contradiction with some of the things that you hear sometimes from other analysts. They say, oh, Bitcoin is following a nice curve of adoption. It doesn't. In fact, actually, I digged more. And this is one of the most recent results. I even posted an article today where I found literature where people actually studied real social networks. And it turns out they follow power law. They don't follow mm -hmm. S. So if you're thinking about Bitcoin as the S-curve, right? Let me explain what the S-curve is. The S-curve is what you will find in this. If I, if there are empirical data showing that uh, this S-curve is real. This S-curve is when you have a technology like the phone, the car, uh, the, you know, the television. Uh, it look, if you measure how many people adopt the technology as a function of time, in a graph, it looks like an S. And why it looks like an X? Because initially, very few people adopted. Right? Then there is, a, as the information starts to spread, etc. then there is a fast progress. You know, then it goes up right, very quickly, uh, and like in an exponential fashion. And then eventually kind of taper off because once everybody has one television or even two or three, <laughs> then there is no more adoption to be done, right? So it, it starts to flatten out, right? It's basically constant. Uh, so that you found that, and there are, if you Google it, right, S-curve of adoption. Uh, mm -hmm. You found uh, graphs where they show all the different technologies. You know, it's, it looks like, kind of like this. Uh, in fact, I have a graph of it, right? It, show, it looks like this, like, and these are two different graphs. One that shows basically how the graph will look like if I have basically on the y-axis, how many people are adopting the technology. And then the other one shows where this graph comes from. It comes from basically the distribution of innovators relatively to uh, late majority, etc. So that will look like a bell curve, right? But uh, if I basically sum up all the people in this bell curve, uh, like if you know calculus, call an integral, basically, the integral will be the yellow curve. So basically, the yellow curve is an expression of the total number, the running number of all the people adopting the technology, if it follows some kind of a bell curve, it will look like an S curve. But mm. it's not the case. See, this is a better graph where you can see all the different power laws. Look at this. Does it fall? You know, even if I showed it in a, in a normal graph, it will not look like an S curve. It looks like a straight line. It looks like a straight line in a log log graph. It means it's a power law. And these papers that I found that actually they studied uh, WeChat, they studied uh, you know the Los Alamos preprints. That is uh, this place where scientists put uh, papers before they publish, etc. Uh, they studied uh, Enron, Enron emails because you know they, they went through bankruptcy, so they made them public. They look at all the links, etc. They all follow power laws. So the article, in fact. Uh, makes a big point of that, that people think that uh, networks follow uh, the same curve of adoption, but they don't, they, they are powerless. And so if we think about addresses as a measure of adoption, it follows a power law. And it's a okay. power law with a power of three. Yeah, go ahead, ask, because uh, it's a monologue. Ask me a question. <laughs> I don't know. I got no questions. I mean, I think, so, so Giovanni, we, I mean, thank you for taking us down that path for everything as far as like with, with the power law and, and how we can take a look at, uh, like you just said, like the S curves, which are a little bit off. We can yeah. say that everything can be related to the, the, the power curve itself. Got it. So I, I know you talked about like for 10 yeah, years. Yeah, if you don't mind, uh, do, do you mind to uh, make a, a punchline because I wanted to explain that tax. And uh, if you give me just one minute, sure, sure, I will, sure. I will uh, make the um, final statement about that. So it turns out basically, if you are thinking about uh, uh, the growth of adoption being this curve, it is another power law, and the power law is cube uh, time to the cube. Uh, so basically, in uh, in fifteen years from now, uh, we basically take uh, that is two times the time, two times to the three means eight. So it will be eight times more of us. I know it sounds slow, but this is what the data shows. Now, the beauty of it is, though, that if you are interested in how the adoption, that is this other graph here, the adoption affects price, so the number of ad addresses that can, is a kind of a proxy for activity of a network, that relationship is the square. So if we double the number of Bitcoiners, 
we get four times the price. If we triple it, we get nine times and so on. So basically, the reason why we see the six in time, this six in time, is due to the combination of these two. So basically it goes something like this. I even brought an equation. Let's see if I can find it. But the equation says that uh, uh, the number, let me see. Uh, it will be easier to see mm -hmm. if I show you. Uh, but and I know we're running out of time, but let me say this. It's basically Bitcoiners, the, the, sorry, the price is equal to the number of Bitcoiners squared. So you double it, you get four times and so on. But because the Bitcoiners grows with time to the cube, when you have time to the cube to the square, it is time to the six. You see? Got this, it. This, now it's much more than just fitting data. Now we have causative links. Now we can explain why we see this behavior in time because it's due to how adoption works that grows throughout this power law in time and the fact that uh, the price responds to the square of a user. Now, the square of a user, this way I explain it here, it's a famous uh, network property called the Metcalf law mm -hmm. that was developed by this uh, uh, engineer to say that uh, if you have a network, the value of a network is not, in fact, I have a slide here to show that the value of a network is not in the number of users themselves, but how they are connected. So the number of connections and the number of connections goes with the square. So it's amazing mm -hmm. that the price of Bitcoin is proportional to the square of a number of users. If a address is a rough measure of a number of users. So it follows the Metcalf law. And because the combination of the Metcalf law and how the addresses are going with the, the cube of time, you get this power law with the six. So this is where it comes from. And this is why it's so regular. It's a beautiful property of networks and Bitcoin is a network. That is the bottom line of a theory. Makes sense. Well, that Giovanni, that was a lot of stuff to go over. Before we, we take <laughs> off, before we take off, there was a, there was a piece I want to take a look at, which was this is the one that that some people are familiar with, the spiral yes. itself. Can you Correct. just kind of break this one down? Because I mean, we took a lot look a lot of the graphs, yes. not linear logarithmic, but I mean, just take a look at this and, and tell us how this works to get so, to what you're talking about. Yeah, yes. So um, I took this inspiration from another analyst. His name is The Rational Root. Uh, and uh, what he did, and there are similar graphs like this that he did, he took the data of Bitcoin, but in this case is that uh, um, color-coded uh, graph, and put it in what is called a polar graph. A polar graph basically if it's a graph that we use. So he didn't invent the polar graph like I didn't invent a, the power law, but you know, both of us get uh, the credit because we did it with Bitcoin. And that is, you know, nobody else thought about it. So he gets the credit, I get the credit. But my innovation relatively to his is that on top of his graph, I actually plot the power law. So the red mm -hmm. curve that you're seeing is the power law to show that actually that nice regular pattern that we see is due to the fact that uh, Bitcoin follows a power law. Now, what, what this graph shows is basically, Imagine you have a, a clock and the mm -hmm. clock uh, has a hand and the end represents the price of Bitcoin. So in this right. case, the end is a funny clock where the end becomes larger and larger and larger, right? As it goes around and it takes four years to go around. So it's a funny clock where uh, time is not funny because if you're thinking about uh, some people think it's strange, right? But it's not strange if you're thinking about the analogy of a clock. So the best way is to think like if this was a clock, right? So in a clock, your uh, time is represented by the angle, right? If you go, uh, for example, 40, if you go 90 degree uh, in a clock, it represents 15 minutes, right? Then uh, 180 is 30 minutes and so on, right? If you do a full circle, it's uh, 12 hours, right? Uh, in this case, the full circle represents the halving cycle, so four years. So a full cycle here is going to represent it by uh, four years. Um, you know, one quarter is one year. So every quarter mm -hmm. is one year. So you're going to a year. So uh, what I represented here is an average of the price of Bitcoin over four years. So the same graph that you saw before, where I was uh, 
averaging it over four years, that look very smooth and it's uh, actually a hockey stick. If now you're transforming it into a clock where uh, now you bend it around, imagine I take the curve and I bend it around, you know, mm -hmm. like if okay, it was okay. the hand of a clock that becomes bigger and bigger, I get a spiral. This is why I sp it's a spiral because the price becomes bigger and bigger. So the radius of the spiral represents the price, the time represents the angle, and every uh, quarter is one year, all the cycle is four. And you can see it's a beautiful progression where uh, the, it's basically like a spiral. The price becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, so the radius becomes bigger. And you see how close it follows, right? Yeah, there are irregularities here and there, but in general, it does follow that red spiral. And the red spiral, it's a simple formula. It's that formula that we saw before, the power of six. In this case, it's done through a circle, right? So in this case, what do we do? We combine both the regularity of a four-year cycle and the general trend that is the power law. When you combine it together, you have this beautiful, beautiful regular pattern. It will not be possible, like I did it with gold. With it, with gold, it looks like a circle. It goes around, 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 because it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, yeah. With the stocks, <laughs> it's really, it goes on cross on top of each other. It's really ugly. The beautiful spiral that we get is because Bitcoin is beautiful, because Bitcoin is regular and it does something weird, different from everybody else. And so this is what this graph does. When Once you start to smooth that curve over four years, it looks so incredibly regular, like a beautiful, almost like a work of nature, right? One of these uh, mm. uh, flowers that you see in nature, all the things that actually are ruled by these power laws. It's the same thing. It's a not this. I'm trying to show that Bitcoin is more like a natural phenomena than uh, a normal asset. You know that is the claim as a physicist. I'm trying to support. I got you. You know what? That is a great segue. I think that first of all, Giovanni, thank you for for coming on the show oh, and explaining that to us. But that will be the title of this video. Bitcoin is beautiful, and I think. Just like some of the big takeaways that, that I took away from this is, is the last things that we were talking about. I think people that are watching this 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 video, they're maybe a little bit worried depending on when they see it because there's been a you know price reduction. Everybody is fearful of price, but you can take solace in the fact of just taking a look at what Giovanni talked about, which is this follows the natural order of things, a natural pattern, and as we can see this. We can see that, yes, there are shifts and there are bumps and there are ups and downs, even as we take a look here. But inevitably, Bitcoin goes to the place where it's always been supposed to go. And it just depends on, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So Giovanni, yes, thank you I so agree. much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Where can we find you, Giovanni, besides on X? So we have um, a website that is kind of hub for everything. You know, we have a, um, a newsletter, we have uh, indicators that actually we develop on the basis uh, of the power law. There is a blog, you know, where uh, I'm posting different information, different development. We are working on a hub. So this place is called bitposidon.com. Uh, it's mm -hmm. our hub and you can basically find everything, even my, even a link to my hack. So come to my ex, you know, be part of our community. We have a Discord community that, again, the link is on the Bitposidon because we want to bring together people that are interested in this and learning from science and apply to Bitcoin. So uh, we are doing a lot of work on, on all this. So bitposidon.com is really the place where everybody should go and then learn more about the power law. Excellent. So again, thanks, Giovanni. We appreciate it. Everybody who's watching the video, thanks for stop. Thanks so much for stopping by. Leave a thumbs up and a subscribe on your way if you like these types of videos. And also everything we just talked about, there'll be a link in the description so you can easily find Giovanni and what he's talking about. So Giovanni, again, thanks so much. We'll have you back on when we see some. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much uh, uh, for your interest on, in the power law.